In a dice world, implementation does not come easy. The dice world contains many variables, changes rapidly, showcases clashes of cultural values and multiple perspectives every day on CNN. When top-down technical experts see their planning assignment as little more than a technical exercise, they are assuming not the dice world, but the plus world exists. They assume that the world is predictable, linear, understandable, and stable, and thus problems can be solved with technical tools alone, as occurs with many interpretive plans. They do not see and do not attempt to include subjective values, politics, clashing norms and visions, uncertainty, confusion, and surprises. They do not see the dice world, and therefore their plan is almost sure to fail, doomed to sit on the shelf until forgotten. One response to planning in a dice world, then, is to involve not just more voices and perspectives and knowledge, but to give those voices power to make decisions, not just be consulted. We generally understand that biodiversity offers us more genes to confront and adapt to new situations, whether through new medicines, heat-resistant crops, biological controls, or even energy sources. The same is true of cultural diversity, which offers more memes to resolve problems, strengthens social cohesion, builds bridges between different groups, and wins political support for consensus-based ideas. Perspectives and cultural identities are built of genes and memes. They are built of diversity. But it is not enough just to inject diversity of opinion and perspective into a planning process. Those who hold these opinions also must command decision-making power to implement them. Even a highly diverse discussion will lose most of its value if one small elite group retains the power to make a decision, which leads to poor decision-making, but lack of trust, lack of ownership, and even worse, oppression. Consider the National Park Service Fire Island National Seashore's Visitor Experience Plan. To develop this plan, the PUP Global Heritage Consortium and its partner, the Consensus Building Institute, facilitated some workshops and trained park staff to facilitate others to derive a consensus among all stakeholders present in determining the visitor experience strategy and products that they were going to develop. The park did not withhold veto power, although it did state the legal and practical limitations at the outset. When technical consultants work alone, or merely harvest the opinions of stakeholders, which they then can decide to use or not, they usually produce quality documents that reflect their ideas, their jargon, their agendas, and their power to make decisions. These kinds of documents are often celebrated when delivered, when consultants are paid, and shortly after consultants leave. But then the document remains in the hands of people who did not plan the contents, did not participate in the research, did not help in producing the conclusions. They did not design the document or even present it to the project owners. In short, they don't own the document, fully understand it, and likely aren't motivated to implement it. You see that those who wrote the plan don't have the power to implement it, and those who have the power to implement didn't participate enough in the process to own the process. This disconnect sends many plans to their premature graves. Interpretation works with ideas about heritage and oftentimes people's strongest connection to land and heritage emerges through the ideas that they have about the land and heritage and their relationship to it. Thus a participatory approach, one in which project managers distribute not just grant limited decision-making power, will result in greater political support, better ideas, more ownership, and ultimately more resilience when the dice world knocks down the front door. In the case of Honduras's Pico Bonito National Park Visitor Management Plan that contained an interpretive component, not only were all the workshops consensus-based, but each director on the board of directors of the nonprofit co-manager took charge of one section and together they wrote the plan. The consultant facilitator of the PUP Global Heritage Consortium then assembled the pieces into the final plan. That facilitator's role was not to make decisions for the park.